Hello, welcome back. It's Dr. Lori again at Verity Primary Medicine and Lifestyle. This is our second installment on our uh, little mini cooking demonstrations for your social distancing enjoyment. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about carbohydrates um, because this is a, a huge, I think, misunderstood uh, macronutrient. We talk about carbs all the time and a lot of people are afraid of them, but there's actually a huge difference between complex carbohydrates such as oatmeal and the oatmeal cookies that we're making today and simple carbohydrates which are the simple um, flours, um, sugars, and those are processed and recognized completely differently by our body. Um, but before we start, I wanted to, sh because we're going to be using oats, I wanted to show you the difference. I get these questions all the time between steel cut oats, which are what we have in this little container, and these are regular rolled oats, which you're used to seeing. The difference is in, in how they are processed. We also have the one minute or the quick cut oats, which I don't have a demonstration of, but this would look like the rolled oats, except much smaller, and they just cook quicker. Steel cut oats take more time to cook, more like 25 minutes or so, 20, 25 minutes. Um, the more the oat is cut down before you eat it, the less um, the less your body has to digest it. The steel cut oats, and this could be any grain we're talking about, the less it's processed, the more your body has to do to process it. So when you eat a steel cut oat, your body has to work harder. It takes longer during the digestive process for it to be broken down. And for that reason, the sugars are not released out of the carbohydrates as you're digesting them quite as quickly. So any type of oats, will not cause a spike in your sugar immediately. Um, those, that sugar will be sustained. The, the um, insulin release and the sugar release is gonna take a while over a couple of hours. And the thing that these carbohydrates have also is fiber. And we really, as a nation, are fiber deficient. Um, I treat people every day, not this week, but typically every day with fiber deficiency. And what is that? Constipation abdominal pain, digestive problems, colon problems, colon polyps, colitis. These are all diseases we see due to lack of fiber in our diet. So the recommendation is to get 20 to 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. That's a lot of fiber. And if you don't eat some type of complex carbohydrates, then you're just not getting that. And you're setting yourself up for disease as well as not having a very good gut bacteria. So these cookies we are making today um, is a quick treat. Most of these ingredients you may have at home right now and not have to run out to the store and they're all whole foods. So these is, uh, oats are a complex carbohydrate. There are no added sugars and by added sugars um, when I tell people to eat oatmeal I think we're all used to and this is what I grew up with are the little packets. Um, you pour the packet out into the bowl and you add boiling water. But what's at the bottom of that packet, you know, the big clump that comes out and the maple and brown sugar, that's all sugar. That big clump is added sugar. So those are simple sugars and they are not broke down the same way that complex carbohydrates are. They cause a quick spike in your um, insulin and a quick spike in your sugar. And then within a short amount of time, say 30 minutes to an hour, your sugar crashes and actually goes a little low. And what happens when that crashes? You get the feelings of low blood sugar, which are hunger and you crave more sugar. So people who tend to eat those simple sugars, which can be in the um, little oatmeal packets, but it can also be a soda um, or a Coke or um, a candy bar. Any of those are gonna cause your blood sugar to come crashing down in about 30 to 60 minutes. And so what do we do? We grab another soda or we grab another little snack and all day long, our sugars are yo-yoing up and down and that causes us to feel fatigued as well as to consume actually more calories. And here's a little secret, even with diet drinks and diet sodas, they don't have the calories of sugar, but they cause that crash. So that's why people who drink diet drinks are still at just as high risk for diabetes as somebody who is drinking regular sugar cokes because they tend to overeat due to those sugar crashes. Your body is, when the sugar goes low, your body's just demanding that you, you eat something. So let's get back to cooking. Um, I don't know if you noticed our brown bananas. Anybody have these at home right now? I know we do. Um, I hate to waste food. So this is something that you can do with these brown soft bananas. The other thing you can do with bananas like this is peel them first 
and then freeze them. They freeze great um, for smoothies and you can put them in Ziploc bags, um, freezer bags, and stick them in the freezer and they keep, I've kept some for probably six months. So um, don't feel guilty about wasting your bananas. You can just peel them and freeze them or peel them and use them in these. So the only sugars we're gonna use in these cookies are the whole foods. So the sugar in bananas, the sugar in, what do we have, a half a cup of raisins and a third a cup of applesauce. Buy the unsweetened applesauce. Apples are pretty sweet. There's no reason we need to have added sugars to them. You'll just have to read the labels, but you can find that um, there are applesauces with no added sugar. You don't need extra syrup because that's just the simple sugars and that's what's gonna help spike your blood sugar. Um, ap applesauce, this applesauce are just apples that are ground, ground down. All right, so I'm gonna start with the bananas. This is a very simple recipe. Um, and it's, it's a no guilt, that's why we call it a green light recipe. I'm just gonna mash the bananas. If you have a potato masher, you can use that. I'm using a fork. The softer they are, the easier they mash. You might wanna get them, they mix easier once they're really mashed up. So. You can make it almost, almost to a liquid consistency. Then it's gonna mix into the oats easier. So the other thing with this recipe is you don't have to use what I like, which is raisins and applesauce and bananas. You can add other things. You can add nuts. Um, Tina used dates. What else did you use in your cookies? Figs. Figs. Mm -hmm. So any of the whole sweet um, dried fruits, just watch. You Again, you don't want to buy something that has added sugars. Dates are very sweet and they're a, they're a whole fruit and a whole food in themselves. So you can add a, a lot of different things to these, just depending on your liking. Make them your own. Um, I add cinnamon. Um, you can try different spices too. Just my go-to. So we've got a quarter cup of almond milk. This is unsweetened almond milk. If you like to use a different type of, of milk, you can a uh, different type of plant milk, you can do that. Um, raisins. One thing I like to do when making cookies, and I didn't do today just because we were short on time, is Oil the raisins first in just a little bit of water. It softens them up and plumps them up a little nicer and they'll be nice and plump in the cookies. And the applesauce, which I just spilled. And then one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And basically we're just going to, it's very easy because you just, Dump it all together, mix it up, and then we're gonna plop it by spoonfuls onto a onto a cookie sheet. Get these in here. Not too, I'm not real neat when it comes to measuring. All right. I'm just gonna mix this with my fork and then add the oats. And I use these are the regular rolled oats, not the quick cut. Again, the steel steel cut oats are not gonna do great in this recipe even though that is my preference for regular oatmeal. I'll mix about half first. When we put these on the cookie sheet, you can use a greased cookie sheet or something with a little bit of the spray. What I like to use, this is called a, it's a silicone mat. I call it a Silpat. I don't know, I think that's a brand name. Um, but these are non-stick um, safe coatings that you can use. In. They're nice, they're easy to use. You can wash them very easily. And um, we use them for everything that we put in the oven. And we have the oven on to 350 degrees and I bake them for 15 to 20 minutes, just depending on your oven and, and how soft you like them. I don't know if you're able to see this bowl. Just kind of, they do mush up pretty easily. The thing with, with your baking with bananas, what I have found, especially making breads, if you have any chunks of the bananas left, that's gonna leave a, um, a big mushy spot and you're not gonna be happy with that. It's gonna taste funny. The other thing is because these are all whole foods, um, there's, you notice there's no oil in here. Um, there's nothing unhealthy at all in this cookie. So it's, it's no guilt other than just the calories if you ate this whole bowl of of dough or your whole bowl, all the cookies on your own, then you're gonna get some calories. But otherwise, there's no 
guilt for having to have a second one or a third one. These freeze well. They're great little trail snacks. They're great for use um, when you're exercising um, or taking out. Kids love them. And so we're just gonna start showing you how these go onto the cookie sheet very quickly, very easily. They stick together pretty well. There's still little areas that are dry. So we're going to just put a couple more on here to show you and then we'll stick them in for 350 degrees, 15 to 20 minutes. And they pretty much look like this when they come out as well. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. So these complex carbohydrates, these are all the no guilt cookies. So fiber is great for your digestive system. It's great for your gut bacteria and, and boosting your immunity. Um, and it helps with cancer prevention, and that's about it. So, and here is our finished product. Um, they are done. They smell delicious. I would eat one right now if they weren't still probably too hot. So, the main thing you want to know about these two, they are real food, and since we don't have preservatives or oils, they do not last long. So, feel free to eat them within two days. They keep longer in the refrigerator. Um, or you can freeze them, but I wouldn't leave them out for more than three days because they do tend to um, mush with the banana and applesauce in there. They get bad rather quickly. So they usually probably won't last that long anyways. Um, here's a look at the recipe and you can write this down if you need to.